Today, we're gonna to be going over some of the worst mistakes that I made as a quarterback. Now, the first mistake that I made as a younger quarterback was honestly putting blind faith and blind trust into a coach without maybe getting a second opinion or trusting your gut. So what do you mean by that? So as an athlete, I was always a fairly coachable guy. And that's the problem with coachable athletes is that you could be so coachable almost to a fault. You get a coach who maybe isn't as educated in a certain topic as other people. Maybe he's not an expert in the craft as other people. And he's telling you to do something that might be wrong and you're so bought in because you're such a coachable athlete and that's what you've been taught to do that it actually hurts you more than it helps you and that was a mistake that I made I'll give you a perfect example so I had a quarterback coach a guy my first quarterback coach probably when I was in like seventh or eighth grade right great dude like one of the best dudes I have ever met on a personal level he knew so much about the game of football he knew so much about footwork he knew so much about timing but the one thing that he did not know a single thing about was throwing mechanics and I almost don't fault him for that because back in that like time it wasn't that long ago I'm not that old but back in, back in that day, not there wasn't as much information out there about throwing mechanics, about biomechanics. Like again, my entire channel for quarterbacks is all about biomechanics, how to throw, sequencing. There was none of that. Nobody ever talked about that. So maybe that's all he knew, but it wasn't exactly the best type of info that I needed because that was where I struggled was my throwing mechanics. I was always fairly smart. I always knew how to drop. I could always move. And those are the areas that he specialized in, right? So I would sit there and he would tell me things like hold the ball up high, spread your chest open like this, take a long step, have a really wide base, right? a lot of things that I don't even teach at all nowadays, nor do a lot of quarterback coaches. And so I would always sit there and be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And the dude played in the NFL. So it's like, how do I question that? You know, like he played in the NFL. So what am I going to do? Say he's wrong. He played in the NFL, but that's the mistake a lot of young players make. They just take this guy's word for it because he's got a big resume, not what's result driven. Right? So I would go there and I'd watch film of other quarterbacks. And that's kind of the, the motivation for this page and for this YouTube channel. But I would watch other quarterbacks and they wouldn't throw like how he was teaching me to throw. And I was always afraid to ask him about it or afraid to go get a second opinion. So don't make that mistake, you guys. If you have a gut feeling that maybe this isn't right, or maybe there's a better way, or maybe you see something, even with the stuff that I teach, always do the research and always trust your gut feeling and try to get a second opinion. And if their original opinion was correct, great. You learned about a certain aspect of your game that could help you out in the future. Now also, fellas, if you are a quarterback and would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off season, we are coming out to 15 different cities across the entire US for two day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So guys, if you would like to train with myself and my staff directly for two days, check out that very first link in the description below. That's where you could sign up and have access to all the places that we are going to. We're going to be coming out to San Francisco, California, Orlando, Florida, Charlotte, North Carolina, Austin, Texas, Las Vegas, Nevada, Seattle, Washington, Chicago, Illinois. Then we'll be heading out to Newark, New Jersey, Birmingham, Alabama, Houston, Texas. Then we'll be coming out to Columbus, Ohio. Then we'll be heading out to Boston, Massachusetts. Then we'll be finishing off the tour in Boise, Idaho, and Los Angeles. Angeles, California. So guys, want some more information on that? Want to sign up? Check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get back to this video. Now, the second mistake that I made as a player, especially as a quarterback, was not using social media enough for my recruiting process, right? So I know this isn't necessarily like a quarterback specific thing. This honestly, honestly could give value to every single player who is um, trying to get recruited, trying to play college football. But I was very lucky, you guys. Like I grew up in Southern California, which is a huge football market, specifically a huge quarterback market, right? So we have constant coaches coming to our area to recruit talent. And I luckily played at a very big high school. So my coach had a lot of connections with a lot of colleges. He knew a lot of college coaches. So all I really had to do was play well. Now, a mistake that I wish I would have, or a mistake that I wish I would have like avoided was not using social media at all. Like I had a Twitter account, you know, maybe I sent a couple DMs here and there to coaches. I followed a couple coaches who followed me, but I really didn't use social media at all. What I should have been doing is posting content on there of myself working out, training in the off season, going to different camps, posting my film, sending my film to college coaches throughout the app. And that's what I want all of you guys to do, especially if you're a high school aged athlete. Don't sit there and just wait for it to happen. I got lucky. I got very, very lucky because I ultimately did get recruited by waiting for it. And it's only because I was in a big football market. So for those of you guys watching this that are in a small football market, like let's say you're in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, you're in Indiana. Yeah, you get some college attention here and there. But if you're a small high school, you have to promote yourself on social media. If you guys have questions on how you could do that, just post it in the comment section below. You guys know this. I answer every comment and read every comment. So if you have questions, how you can do that again, post below, but make sure you don't make that mistake. Now, the next mistake that I made as a younger player, and this has to do with recruiting as well, was not going to enough camps when I didn't have varsity film. So a lot of you guys are probably in this situation where you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, maybe you're an eighth grader, whatever, and you have dreams and aspirations of playing college football, just like I did, just like everybody does, right? But I made the mistake of, well, I don't have any varsity film yet, so why am I going to go to these different camps? And you should be going to camps to meet people and build relationships. Guys, the recruiting process 
is all about relationships. There might be a coach at a Division three that you meet, that you really like, that you interact with on Twitter, and the next year, he might get a job at a big school. And then, guess what? If that big school's looking for a receiver or quarterback, he's like, hey, I know a guy who's in this area that I go recruit to. So recruiting is a very small world. So what I wish I would have done as a freshman, sophomore, is gone to a lot of camps. So just the mindset of meeting people, shaking hands, getting their information on Twitter. And again, like I mentioned, not using social media was a mistake I made, but maybe if I had those contacts build up, I could use social media to reach out to them, build a relationship, and that might lead to a future offer. So make sure, guys, you're attending camps. Don't break the bank and travel all across the country to just go to camps and meet people. Go to some local ones. Go to some ones that are in your area, maybe where there's multiple college staffs in attendance. That's another one. Like They're called satellite camps or mega camps, where there's maybe 10 to 12 different staffs of 10 to 12 different universities there. Go there, meet some people, get some following, get some Twitter following. If you perform well, maybe they like you, maybe they just want to see your film before they make a decision. So guys, make sure you don't avoid camps. Now, another mistake I made as a quarterback, and this is more quarterback specific, was not watching enough film early on in my career. I remember, you know, like probably my like junior, senior year of high school is when I really started studying film. Um, and, you know, being very detailed with my film, like I guess you could say breakdown process, where it was like, okay, I'm looking for top coverages, I'm looking for a team's best players, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that, and I had a process of watching film. But I remember when I was an eighth grade freshman, sophomore, I didn't really watch that much film. I'd watch practice film to try to learn a few things, but as far as the opponent goes, I was just like, okay, when I get out there, I'm going to understand what, you know, I'll know what defense they're in, <clears throat> I'll know what coverage they're in, whatever, and I can just react on the fly. It's not the best course of action, you guys. You have to prepare. If you're failing to prepare in terms of the football IQ side of things, you're not going to be a successful quarterback long term. You might be able to get away with it on sheer athleticism, but as soon as the talent gets bigger, you need to make sure that you are studying film and watching film. Now, if you want to learn how to actually watch film the right way and get an actual process for watching film the right way, guys, check out that second link in the description below. I have made 500 different videos all on our website based on reading defenses. We organize them by categories, cover one, cover two, cover three, and we break down film. It's literally a clip of film, like NFL film, college film. I'm drawing on the screen, I'm narrating it, I'm talking about what to look for as a QB, and that's one of the best things that you guys can do. So guys, second link in that description below if that's of interest to you. Now, mistake number five that I made as a young quarterback was not working enough with my receivers in the offseason. I think it was always one of those things, like I always went to a quarterback coach, like I mentioned in the very beginning of this, but at the end of the day, guys, from like August all the way until like November or however long you're playing football that season, you were working with your receivers on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And you don't want to have to build up chemistry in those August, September, October months, and then you guys are starting to get comfortable, and then the end of the season's right around the corner. So I recommend, guys, as soon as possible, get chemistry with your wide receivers. Invite them out to your quarterback coach. Receivers are always down to catch, always down to work routes, especially if they don't have to pay, and usually a quarterback coach will not charge a receiver that you're bringing because he's not a receiver guy. He just needs extra hands to catch. That actually helps him him out as a coach. So guys, every chance that you could get, anytime that you're doing off-season training, make sure that you bring your receivers. I was always a guy who was pretty regimented, like I had a set schedule, like I'm throwing it this time, I'm throwing it that time. I wish I was a little bit more flexible with the schedule so I could get receivers out here. I would always throw with my dad or whoever, and that was always good. That's always good work to do. Do not get me wrong, but if you could get receivers out there more often than not, that's only going to help your game.